Okay, so this is what I got. You can see um, I just lightly went over the roof. Again, I'm not trying to make this look too aged here. I could have gone uh, pretty heavy on the roof, but since this car is a relatively fresh repaint, I wanted to keep it relatively light. But you can see all the uh, chipping paint effects. Um, again, on this side, nothing too much has changed. Uh, no real weathering on it. I want to keep this nice and fresh and clean. Um, but I did do the trucks, of course. And uh, I'll do the powder and chalk work afterwards once everything is 100% done. Um, on side B, this is the better side with the weathering. In terms of weathering, I should say. You can see it uh, got some scratches on the door there, around the door, on the ribs, all kinds of rust effects, running rust, a little bit of streaking kind of covering. But you can still see the paint has that relatively light gloss to it. That's what I wanted to try to maintain with this, and that's why I chose to just use the gloss coat originally. And then you can again see the trucks and everything else. All that looks really good. Wheels are all filled in. And then the ends are all uh, done up. I'll just have to put the chocks on here and there to finish this. But the weathering pretty much at this point is done on the car. And we're ready to basically complete this model now uh, by doing the graffiti, or finishing the graffiti on side A of the car. Uh, finishing it up with the Storm Stripper herself. Then some small little tags here in this corner and then underneath the S lettering and then of course we'll put the safety striping on when it's all when it's all said and done uh, but this pretty much finishes up day two of this project uh, it's uh, one in the morning now I gotta go to bed I'll have to work most of the day tomorrow uh, but hopefully in the afternoon I can actually finish this bad boy up so uh, we'll start the video back up tomorrow guys okay so it's uh, day three I just got home from work I'm gonna try to finish this up today um, and I just want to go over some things here real quick really just more over a game plan and one final look at this uh, before I get started. Um, basically, when I do something like this where it's a high level of detail, there's multiple things I need to do here. I like to start at one particular point at a time and then work my way generally down. Um, and in this particular case, I want to start with the helmet because this is the most detailed piece uh, of this tag. You can see all of the fine details, all of the little knobs and everything, all the vents, the face, all of that in the shield. It's a lot of detail and that's what I, I feel would be best to start with. Um, and it's a small area to work with of course and then I'm working on a door which has these panels like these that bulge out. That doesn't help at all. It's not. We're not working with a smooth sided car. It's already tricky enough to do it with a, a smooth sided car but to do it this way it's going to be extremely challenging but I'm just going to have to make do with what I have, try to do my best here. And I don't ever recommend that you try to tackle all of this at once. Never do it that way because you can end up making an arm that's slightly out of proportion or it could be, you know, all the way over here and then you paint the body on it and it's over here. I've had it at, at times where I've screwed it up pretty good. So it's just, in my opinion, the best way to do something like this where it's this complicated is just to start from one area at a time, generally starting at the top and working your way down. You can go from the bottom, but then what you're going to deal with is you're going to, while you have your hand on the car, you're going to be, you know, your hand could potentially rub up on this and then scrape some of it off, which you would definitely want to avoid. Um, so it's just a really a lot of time, patience, uh, a steady hand, and just a lot of care when doing this. Uh, so enough chit chat, I'm just delaying the inevitable. Let's go ahead and get started with this. So just like before, I have my mechanical pencil, and the nice thing about this is that you can trace the lines out. Uh, for all the details. Uh, I'm not going to worry about hair, I'm not going to worry about body features, I'm just going to try to do the basic outline, and again I'm going to try to start with the helmet here at the top of the door. Now it's going to be very tricky because I have all of these slats in these bulge panels on the door to work around, so this is going to be very tricky, uh, but as long as I get a basic outline, that's what I need to start with. So looking at the photos here, I'm just going to try to guesstimate the positioning of everything here. I'm going to say I need to start about right here. Now I'm just going to try to do the top of the helmet. Notice I'm doing something like dash lines, and I'm barely applying any kind of real pressure to this right now. 
I just want this to be very, very light lines. Uh, in the event that I need to correct something, I don't want a heavy line there where I got to try to paint over it or something like that. And then you have all of this, you know, thick buildup or texture. It can be a real pain to get rid of. And uh, it's just best to work on this just one little bit at a time. So I'm just okay. So about an hour and a half later, or so I finally got the helmet just in the right place. It took a little bit of tinkering to get this exactly where I wanted it, uh, but at this point in time, I think I got it, and it looks dead on uh, to the photo. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, it's a good start. Um, but now comes the second challenging part: is doing the body here and making the arm and getting that in the right position. Um, I'm just trying to look at basically like the corner of the lettering as a guide, the edges of the door as a guide here, and I'm just going to try to get this as close as I can. Alright, so uh, going along here, I got some of the outline on, uh, however I ran into one little issue and that was uh, uh, outlining the leg and her arm here, and it was what I, basically what I decided to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint the pole on here, and it'll basically serve as a guide so I can get the leg and the arm in the right position. So what I'm going to do, I just trace this out and I'm going to start painting it gray as the base color. Remember all the highlights and stuff, all the details will come later. Right now I just need to get this painted. And like I said, it'll be a relatively helpful guide uh, for positioning all of the body parts like the leg and the arm on the uh, storm stripper here. In this. So I'm going to go ahead and start filling all this in okay so here's a progress checkup then this is what I got so far I got the rough outlines done at this point my back and my neck are freaking killing me I've now been working on uh, this car let's see it's uh, 924 now I've been working on this thing since 4 o'clock that's literally 5 hours and uh, I've gotten this far uh, I'm almost tempted to kinda just finish up the outlines maybe get some more things done and just call it a night but my neck is really killing me that's the downside of doing this I can only do it for so long but uh, I've gotten some significant progress done and um, real quick I'll just carefully bring this over again if I can set this up just right there's mine there's the real one they're very close in my opinion we're getting there Okay, I almost, almost forgot here. One other quick thing I want to point out. I got a very special color for this. I was kind of dreading having to make this skin tone here, which is a relatively dark sandy color that he used. Um, and after a quick visit to my, my local hobby shop, I found a very particular color. This stuff here, Americana, and uh, Natural Buff. And I found that it's actually a very close match. I know this is hard to see, but if you take the color and compare it, it's almost dead on. I'm uh, actually very surprised and I'm very happy with that because I found a color that I can pretty much use right out of the bottle for this color and it'll look just right. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set this back up here. I'm not going to edit this, I'm just going to go ahead and set it back to how it was. Zoom back in here and I'll basically demonstrate uh, this going on here. Again, I'll use my fine tip brush. I've got the color right out of the bottle. And I'm just going to start putting this on here in some places, like on the hands, for example. Areas like that that I've pretty much finished up and just need the colors to go in. I'll just try to go over these real quick. I can add some other uh, different coats later, but I'm just going to try to get this little area hit up real quick. Also, what's nice about this paint, generally colors like this are very hard to apply because they're so thin. But in this case, since I'm working with a, a white background, that uh, really simplifies things quite a bit. Very much, actually. I'm just going to keep working this up along the arm. Just one little bit at a time. I'm going to try to bring it right up to these lines. That way I can sharpen them, make them look much more defined, much finer. This part, to me, is always the most exciting because you really get to see your uh, work really come to life uh, with the colors and all that. It's one thing to be doing all this, all the countless hours of work just trying to get these outlines right, but then to start actually filling it in, you, you see all of your work 
really start to pay off and I'm uh, really excited about this so far. And like I said, my back and my neck is completely freaking locked up right now. I'm not, I'm not kidding, it hurts like hell, but I just really want to get this done. I'm really excited. But I'll just try to keep pressing on here, try to get this thing done if I can. I know it might be kind of hard to see, but I'm using a very, very, very fine brush here to do this. And this is really the only way you can do this, to be honest, unless you use decals. To get up that close and do the detail work, it's just the that's just really the only way you can get in here and do this is with fine tip brushes. And I use Atlas number 5 or 10.0 brushes, I believe, which are extremely fine. They're a bit expensive to you, but these are the ones that I've always found to work the best. So, you'll notice I'm just going to paint all of this pretty much the buff color. Uh, I'll do the bra and the uh, panties later. I know that's kind of funny I'm saying that on camera, but that's just the point I'm making. Because I'll, I'll have to do all that detail work separately. <laughs> it sounds so freaking funny the way I said that. This is a kid's channel. What am I doing? <laughs> I know some guy is going to be complaining about that. What did you just say? Were you talking about bras and underwear on the freaking video my kids were around? Got some more black paint. I'm just going to do a outline. Um, again, I'm just going to work my photo here. Just so I get this right. I'm going to screw it up at this point. I'm just going to draw this in real quick. Okay, so um, I just checked my camera here, and recently I just finished um, her thong, her hair. Um, I did some detail work to the pole here, and um, I also finished bringing the bits of the black outline for the E uh, underneath her here. You can see I, I brought those basically up to her uh, character. Um, I still got to do this little bit here, but I got to finish the detail work first. Um, but now I got to try to draw her bra here. And again, I got the mechanical pencil uh, to try to do this. Uh, but first, I should mention um, I was filming this part, this, and then the work on the here. But unfortunately, I realized that I did hit record, but my memory was full on the camera, so all of this. Uh, didn't get recorded after all, which I, I'm really, I really apologize about that. That was uh, about 20 minutes of additional footage that uh, unfortunately didn't make it because it wasn't recorded, so I apologize about that. Alrighty, so we're pretty much on the home stretch here. I got all of the body details and everything done. The mask is done. Um, the last thing I got to do is put the red highlights on. Uh, if you remember in the photos, the entire uh, girl is surrounded by a red band basically uh, so I'm gonna put that all the way around uh, with my fine brush once I do that I'll be able to come in here and uh, connect this black uh, back together underneath here for the band on the E so I'm just gonna start up here and just start applying this to the edge of the pole like this Alright, then that dot on your head was from a sniper rifle. 
So I'm just continuing to work on this. And I really gotta have to really have to dilute this paint quite a bit to get it so that it flows off the tip of my brush. It's already hard enough. It's such a fine line, but it's very hard when it, you're doing fine lines and the paint wants to stick real bad. So I might have to uh, put the cap back on and get a little bit more fresh paint here. But for the most part, I'm getting this covered up uh, relatively quickly. And it's looking pretty good. It looks like there's another little tag right here at the bottom and I'm going to try to recreate to the best of my ability. Okay, so here it is. Finally got it done. Um, I've officially put in 23 hours uh, into this car uh, to get it pretty much complete. Uh, and I apologize there wasn't as much commentary, but I just wanted to kind of bust through this as, uh, you know, as quickly as possible. But I think the video covers basically, uh, you know, at least it shows you a little bit really how I actually do this kind of stuff. And it was a fun project for sure. Um, so... I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here real quick, go over the details real fast. You can see all the nice details that we did, all the nice decal work. The S, the E, the N, and the small tag in the corner there. I just put the safety stripes on it, that's what I was working on just now. And then the storm stripper is also completed. Looks really nice. And then again, there's the prototype there on the computer screen. Everything's there. Again, I think this looks really good. I think I really, really got it. I'm really happy with it. You can see all that nice detail work. Well worth it. So, this car will be uh, going in my collection here. I know a lot of you will probably be asking if this thing's for sale, and uh, the answer is no. I. Uh, I definitely wouldn't have done this for anyone else. It's just uh, one of those cars I, I like myself and I wanted to have a replica of. Uh, would I do it again? Definitely not. And uh, I don't think any amount of money is really worth what I think this car is worth. <laughs> so, um, but that's pretty much it. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I'll think it, uh, think it looks pretty good. And I'm uh, always really excited, man. My mind is freaking fried, though. I all that time. I mean, I pretty much worked I think today from uh, 4 o'clock and it's going on 1 in the morning now. I'm pretty damn uh, pretty tired, but <laughs> oh well. I mean, uh, it'll be fun kind of editing all through this and uh, going over all of the various steps again and seeing me do this from start to finish. I think it'll be kind of fun to edit all this. Uh, but hopefully, guys, you like the video. Uh, I'll be sure to post more videos coming up. I'll have some more updates coming as well. Uh, so you guys can stay tuned for more. Be sure to check me out on Facebook. You guys can check out my Facebook page. You know what to do. Dan's Custom Trains. It is my group page. You guys can check that out when you want. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, subscribe here. Leave comments. Let me know what you think. And uh, be sure to stay tuned for more. Take it easy, guys.